Are you sick of feeling like you're bugging your friends and family to support you in your network marketing business and really would love to just get great at attracting new leads? Stay tuned because we are covering all that today. Walker. I am a client acquisition specialist and my job is to help you find the simplest strategies to consistently finding your dream clients. And I'm excited that you're here on the channel today. I got my start in business in network marketing. Uh, direct sales was my very first business that I did, my first entrepreneurial effort. And I learned so much while I was there. And if I could go back to myself, you know, what was that, 15 years ago, and teach myself a couple of little lessons, number one would be how to find the right leads for your business because, oh, my earrings turned around, there we go. Um, because if you, don't know how to find leads. You end up bugging friends and family, and then you, again, next time you need to up-level your rank, you're bugging the same friends and the same family, and then you find yourself reaching out to people that you haven't talked to since high school, and then you're immediately trying to jump into, hey, why don't you come do business with me? Join my team. And it's a good way to lose some friends if you're not careful with that. So I know that you don't do that because you want to upset people or offend people or bug people. I know that it's really just a matter of not knowing what else to do. So today what we're gonna dedicate this video to is showing you great strategies that can help you be able to find leads who are actually interested and excited in your business. So today we're covering the do's and don'ts. I'm gonna give you four things I think you should stop doing that are not helping your business. And I'm gonna give you four things I think you should start doing that will bring you new leads consistently. And while we go through, I can share with you a couple things that I experienced on my journey to building my network marketing business as well. So if you are new to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get notified every time we release new content, which is three times a week. So the first thing that we're gonna put on the don't list is don't rely on your friends and family. I'm not saying that you can't work with your friends and family. I'm saying when you rely on friends and family and think that's going to be enough to get you where you want to go, that's where you have too small of a pool of people and you end up pestering and asking the same people every single time you have a goal and it becomes a, a process where they don't really take you seriously because they don't see you working with other clients. They don't see you out there doing business with other people. And I've never, ever, ever met a plumber who's like, oh yeah, I'm starting a plumbing business. I'm gonna just work with my friends and family, right? Like, no, you might start with your friends and family, but you've gotta establish a customer base. So when you rely on friends and family, you keep your pool too small and it just doesn't work well. Second thing we gotta stop doing is sending social media inbox pitches. You guys, it is not a good look. It's not a great way to do business. And I get these on a regular basis. Somebody reaching out, it's the very first connection. It's like, hey, thanks so much for connecting. I'd love to hear more about what you do. And every time I get those, I'm like, would you really? Or are you just waiting to pitch me in the second message? And so that, sure enough, that second message is always a pitch. So whether your pitch is the first message or the second message, it doesn't matter. You should not be pitching people who have not expressed interest. You should not be pitching people that you don't have a relationship or communication with. You should not be pitching people that you don't know have a need or a desire. Like, we got to find the right people. If you'll do a little bit more work on the front end, you'll get a lot better results on the back end. And you can stop giving your industry a bad name because let's be honest, the number one reason you get objections, at least I did, was that people didn't want to join my team and do my business is that they didn't want to be network marketers. Well, why is there a negative association with network marketing? Because sometimes people do bad things because they don't know how to do it better. So we're going to stop doing the social media inbox pitching and we're going to start doing some other things that will be more productive. Tip number three, third thing we got to stop doing is the bait and switch. So the bait and switch is where you pretend like you're interested in the thing that they do so that then you can sell them the thing that you do. You guys, I did this. And again, I didn't do it because I meant to be malicious or sleazy in any way. I just didn't really know how to be successful at finding people when I first got started. And so I would do this. I would be like, oh, hey, you know, 
you do XYZ company, I'd love to host a party for you. And then, you know, then you could host one for me too. Like, guys, let's, let's not bait and switch or calling them and, you know, inviting them to go to the park so your kids can play. But then when you get to the park, you're really there because you want to talk to them about your business. That is a bait and switch. Anytime that you are intending one thing, but you're putting something else out in front of it so you can create a context to do that, it's going to feel a little bit deceptive. A better way to do it would be to find a really great way to just ask somebody and find out if they're interested or not. Ask for their interest level, ask for their needs. And I'm going to show you some examples that do work, but we have to first agree we cannot keep doing the bait and switch. Okay, number four, don't be the person who on your social media is constantly talking about your product, your service, your product, your service, your product, your service. Because what will happen is you will attract in people who also love your product and your service. And so, you know, if it's essential oils, you'll attract all of your essential oils friends and then you'll have all this engagement, but it's not new people. It's not the right people. And so if you know, it's you're always talking about your makeup brand that you sell, you'll attract in all of the people who are already in your organization. So we, we need to make sure that we're creating a better context for our conversations. All right, that's what we're going to stop doing. Now let's talk about what you should do. The so first thing I'm gonna encourage you to do is a 30 day video challenge. You could do it on YouTube, you could do it on Facebook Live, you could do it on IGTV, you could do it on LinkedIn, wherever you wanna do it. But instead of just talking about your product and service, you're gonna talk about the message behind that product and service. So if you are in a, a makeup company, you could do uh, before and after videos where you're talking about empowerment and self-esteem and healthy body image. If you're in a health and wellness company, you could talk about in general becoming more healthy and more well and covering basic principles and then sprinkling in your product. So you wanna go message-based, not product-based. When you do that, people will resonate with the message. They'll be attracted to the message because they like the message they'll be more attracted to the product. The reason why the 30 day video challenge is awesome is because it's gonna freak out the algorithms and then all of a sudden Facebook is gonna give you a lot of visibility or Instagram is gonna give you a lot of visibility and videos are getting visibility and they're getting engagement right now. So it's a great way to push yourself and just see how many conversations you can generate through live, on the go, imperfect style videos. Um, I think you'll be surprised at how much return you can get from that. All right, second way you can get new leads is you can do a challenge group. So um, if you sell health and wellness products, you could do a like a five or a seven day group around detoxing. Um, if you are you know in makeup and cosmetics, you could do a uh, like a five day challenge of like every day is a new look and you're, you're teaching them certain skills of contouring, you know, day one contouring, day two eye shapes, day three, and you can kind of teach that inside of a challenge group. Um, if you sell um, life insurance, you could do a, uh, you could do like a five day challenge around getting your will in place. Um, and then you know the life insurance becomes a part of that conversation. So the thing with the challenge group is you wanna create a short window of time. I would not go longer than seven days. And during that time, you're trying to create an engaging conversation around something that people are interested in and finding out within there who is interested and excited about moving to the next level with you. And it gives you an opportunity to sell as well. So it's marketing, it's getting new leads coming in. It's helping you to figure out who's interested, who's not. And then you also get to sell inside of the group as well. Third strategy you could do is you could go on podcast interviews. You guys, there are a ton of podcasts right now. It's really easy to get on podcast interviews. You could go on and you could talk about, again, the message around the product. So go on and talk about health and wellness or go on and talk about fitness in your 40s or go on and you know talk about the importance of being financially prepared with your life insurance or you know decreasing your communication costs as a way to support small business owners. Go and pre create a message and then 
In that, you give people a call to action to reach out and contact you. And that is a great way to get new interested people as well. Tip number four is JV events and webinars. This is where you reach out to somebody who has already acquired your ideal client. They have a list or they have a social media following and you reach out and you collaborate together and you get together and you do a side-by-side -side Facebook Live or you get together and you do a Zoom call where other people can get in. This is one of the easiest ways and one of the best ways to produce consistent leads. If you had one JV webinar or event per week, you could easily generate 20 to 50 new leads per week for your network marketing business. When was the last time you did that without bugging friends and family? So I want you to just kind of think outside the box a little bit and understand that traditional marketing principles are for you. I know that network marketing is great about teaching you how to get referrals and, and I love that and teaching you that every person knows two more. I love that. That's powerful. I wish that more traditional businesses would take that approach in, but I also wish that you guys would take in some traditional marketing principles into your business because far too many people, far too many, do great when they first start with their initial round of friends and family, but as soon as they hit the edge of their warm market, they're done. They stop growing. They don't know how to progress and they get stuck or they quit. And if you could get really good at bringing new people into your business, you would be able to help your team members through that phase. So I hope that this has been helpful. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What do you do to bring new leads into your network marketing business that works really well for you? And make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. I also invite you to come and join us in our private Facebook group. It's called Acquire. It's a great place to ask questions, connect with other like-minded business owners, and just stay plugged in in the behind the scenes business conversation. So hit the like button, leave us a comment, share this with your friends who are also entrepreneurs. And if you need some more resources, I'd love to connect you with a free resource that I have. I have a book called the I'm Not a Salesperson Sales Book, Sell Like a Natural Even If You're Not. And there are a lot of network marketers that one of their hangups is they don't quite know how to sell. So if that sounds like you, I will give you the book for free. Go to www.salesaremything.com. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you have a great day.